morning. Good morning. My name's Pastor Frank, and we welcome you, whether you're here in person or in our online worship, we are have a, have a very meaningful service planned. We're continuing our message series, Inner Navigation, and I this is the lengthening of days, and so I hope you enjoyed springing forward this morning. <laughs> Let's, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's turn to our, our maestro at the organ. if you are able while I read this historic confession of the church the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to our prayer time, we have um, much to be thankful for and much to lift to God in prayer. You uh, may have seen a few flowers sprinkled around the church today. That's because yesterday was the celebration of life for Donna Castle. Donna was in Jeannie Russell's Sunday school class and was married to Bert. Uh, Interesting journey. And they had 20 or so in in these times, a very intimate family service, but really celebrated her life. And they wanted us to be blessed with her flowers this morning. So we are thankful for Donna and her life and her love of color. Um, we are so longing to be through with all of this. We are so longing to, for God to lead us across the finish line so that we can put away these masks, so that we can hug each other and, and laugh and, and, and be a church in fellowship together, and it will be a little while longer. So we're talking, you know, this, in this season of, of Lent, we're talking about inner navigation. And God says a little bit longer, a little bit longer. So let me mention to you, um, on Easter, we're going to have four services. 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 11. The early service, sunrise service, will be in this room. Um, and with a quartet, wonderful Easter hymns, and, and thank you, Michael, for that. The next service is going to be down in the um, sanctuary uh, while the band, uh, the worship band, for the 930 Easter redemption service rehearses. We will down, be down in the sanctuary, so if you'd like to come to that service, um, the last Easter in that room. And then um, at 9.30, we'll have the Redemption uh, Modern Service. And at 11 o'clock, Mike's bringing in a brass quintet, some timpani, and a quartet to lead us in triumphant Easter worship. So that will be a great day. Um, God asks us to go a little farther on this race we are running. Let's bring it across the finish line. And we can do that. We know we can. Um, So let's turn our hearts and minds to God as we encounter God in prayer.
dear God, we come to you. We come to you offering our thanksgiving and a goodly measure of joy that you would turn your ear to the likes of us in the many seasons of our lives. We pray, gracious God, that you will minister to us as we long to be through with all of this. We long that you will help us to return to the joys of our living to our community of faith in vastly more normal functioning. I thank you for the ones who have stayed faithful to you through this unusual season. And Lord, we notice that even in these conditions, life goes on. The responsibilities of our lives continues, and we need strength for the living of these days. So thank you for making the journey with us. We pray for our health care professionals, our doctors and nurses, respiratory therapists. We pray for those who are ill or afflicted, have been injured or suffer illness. We ask that you would make the, the vaccine terrifically effective in our lives so that relationships can be restored and be restorative. And Lord, we thank you for, for the many who have come to this place to study your word, to learn your good news. And we pray all of this in the name of Christ who teaches us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, we turn to our choir and you will recognize some faces on the screen.
Thank you, Michael. I know that was at no small effort, and it's great to see some of our familiar singers up there, uh, along with our quartet. God bless us all. We do respond to God's great generosity to, to us. I was, uh, years ago, on, uh, in 1991, I was in Singapore at the United Methodist Congress. And we were there, gathered all, all, around, from around the world. And 1991 was the first Congress after the fall of the Berlin Wall. So in this large conference center where Methodists from all over the world were gathered to worship. At the opening worship, they had a procession of banners Deleg of all the delegations that had come to be a part of this large Methodist meeting. And I'll, I will always remember when the woman in um, traditional garb carried the banner among all the other banners, but she was carrying the banner of the United Germany for the first time since World War II. We stood and applauded and applauded till our hands stung. Look at what has God has done. And in every Sunday worships, that's what we do. We say, look what God has done. As a part of that Congress, I, um, our, one of the general secretaries of the Methodist Congress was named Bill Quick. We're going to, by the way, talk about waiting on the Lord today, so it's interesting to talk about Bill Quick. He was 24 years the uh, pastor of the mammoth, magnificent downtown church in Detroit. Detroit has been on harder times lately, but this was a really big, impressive 
ministry that was reaching out to people all over, all over Detroit and known all over the country. Bill, Bill Quick preached the keynote sermon at that conference. And after he had preached, I remember we were in an out-of-the-way hallway in the convention center, and I saw him. And I said, Dr. Quick, I just want to tell you what a meaningful service sermon that was and how much I admire your ministry. And he put his arm around me, and we kind of walked down the hall slowly together. He said, well, now this is 1991. He says, the years of my ministry are nearly through. And we're here to pass the torch to the likes of you. And we are here to make sure that the light of the faith, the torch of the faith, gets passed well to the coming generations, aren't we? Because the generations past have been so faithful to pass it to us. And so as we prepare to receive our offering, I want to share with you a prayer that was widely published that Bill Quick wrote. And we thank, thank God for those of you who are making regularly your online gifts to the church or regularly mailing a check to the church because these are such unusual times. It's very, very important. So as we prepare ourselves to, again, bless this offering, And if you're ready to make an offering right here today, as you depart, there is an offering basket, and we will bless it now. So this is how, once upon a time, Bill Quick blessed the offering at his church. He said, O Lord, you give us life. We must offer commitment. O Lord, you give us scripture. We must offer offer our study. O Lord, you give us children. We must serve. We must serve as good parents. O Lord, you give us talents and we must minister accordingly. O Lord, you give us the church. We must extend the fellowship. O Lord, you give us the gospel. We must Share the good news. O Lord, you give us each other. We must live in love. O Lord, you give us money. We must invest in the eternal. O giver of all that we call good and perfect, transform our gratitude from what you have placed within our hand into significant means of serving others as well as serving you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And so now, we dedicate these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Michael. You know, we're going to start handing out worship folders again to you on Palm Sunday, which is just in a couple of weeks, hard to believe. And if you had your virtual worship order of service in front of you, you would see that our offertory was entitled, of course, I'd Rather Have Jesus. And you would see Arrangement Martin. Let's let Michael Martin know how much we appreciate him. <laughs> it's already been a rich morning. You know, we, we talk about um, five essential practices for Christian living. We pray five times a day, breakfast, or when you arise, breakfast, lunch, supper, and when you go to bed. Read five scriptures a day. That's a good amount you can read. You can read more. You can read five chapters a day. But if you want to, in the season of Lent, jumpstart your Bible study, read five scriptures a day. And if you want to get acquainted with the Gospels, the, the, the biblical telling of the narrative of Jesus' life, his parables, his lessons, his healings, his struggles, his confrontation with those who are against him, his crucifixion and his resurrection. Then a good, great way to start is to read Matthew, then Luke, then Mark, and then the Gospel of John, because the Gospel of John so poetically and beauti beautifully and theologically wraps a bow around each of it, each of these other Gospels. And then, perhaps, you want some devotional reading, and reading the Psalms is just great. And you know some of the favorite Psalms. Psalm 23 comes to mind. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Makes me to lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside still waters. Restores my soul. Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Or Psalm 100, you can Google the most favorite psalms. And I encourage you during Lent, 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 which is called the lengthening of days. And we recalibrate our inner navigation. I encourage you to keep a psalm in your pocket. A different psalm every week or a different psalm every day. So you can read among the hours of the day as you are inclined. Receive that encouragement. And, of course, a great place to go in the Bible for your five verses or five chapters a day to, is to read Genesis and Exodus. The story of the patriarchs, the story of God leading us forth from bondage whatever that bondage may be. So, so, we pray five times a day, we read five scriptures a day, we find ways to serve, and during this pandemic, this church has been vital and exciting and impressive in service. And so, find a way to serve through your church, and we have many ways available, and you can read about them on our website, and or in the community, or spontaneously with your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourselves. And, and we, we find uh, uh, the opportunity to give, to share, and we've just had that part of our worship. We worship God by sharing what we have, our, our worldly treasure, that God may bless it, that God may ordain it, our offering for God's work. And then we share the light. Because of what God has done, we share the light. By word and deed, we share 
the light. And that is what we're called to do. And in this season, amidst the likes of us, we are called to pass the torch from generation to generation to generation to generation, even as it has been passed to us. Now, I want to, I specifically mentioned our psalms because our scripture of the morning is from psalms. So let me read to you a portion of the 40th psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord. He returned to me and heard my cry. I waited patiently for the Lord. He returned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord. And put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Who does not look to the proud. To those who turn aside to false gods. And skipping down. Then I said, here am I. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. Do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh dear and gracious God, speak to us this day. Call us, claim us, make us your own. So I want to talk to you about artificial intelligence and divine intelligence. It's not unusual for me to start the day saying something like this. Hey, Google, what's the weather today? And Google will say in New Albany, Ohio, it's going to be 56 degrees. We lean on Google, we lean on Alexa, we lean on Siri sometimes for finding our way, for getting information, for getting advice. Yesterday, I was here uh, preparing for the service for uh, Donna Castle, and I got a little buzz on my cell phone and and it said Google Home has just done a safety check. Beth was home and online with a women's retreat. We had about 50 women uh, on in our women's retreat, mini retreat that was held yesterday. They had a great time, a profound time, a wonderful time. And Beth was at home on online with a Zoom meeting. Pastor Carol was the one who led that meeting by the way, did a great job. And And I knew that Google Home had just sent a beep through our home smoke detectors because Google told me that they had just performed a safety check. So we depend on Google, we depend on Alexa, we depend on Siri to keep us safe and to give us advice occasionally. uh, Lena Bradford and Tyler Lacoma wrote an article called The Funniest Things to Ask Alexa. So this, this is what they came up with. Question, Alexa, surely you can't be serious. Alexa, surely you can't be serious. Answer, 
I am serious, and please don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Alexa, how much do you weigh? I am weightless. Like a cloud. Wait a minute. Clouds actually have weight, a lot of it. So that's not quite, quite, quite right. Let's just say I am more sass than mass. <laughs> Alexa, make me a sandwich. Okay, you're a sandwich. <laughs> Alexa, find Chuck Norris. And Alexa responds, if Chuck Norris wants to find you, wants you to find where he is, he'll, if Chuck Norris wants you to know where he is, he'll find you. If he doesn't, you won't know until it's too late. Alexa, I am your father. No, no, that's not true. It's impossible. Alexa, what do you want when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be the computer on Star Trek. We have all kinds of fun with Alexa. Um, I, recently I said to Joe, I said, um, you know, we're gonna have our second vaccine soon and mom and I are thinking about coming to visit you in Nashville in, in uh, April. And he says, he just pause it for a second, then I hear him say, Hey Google, remind me what date Vanderbilt graduation is. And then he paused and he said, That's so you don't show up when all the other families are here for graduation, because he's not graduating this spring. And and we got that information. Artificial intelligence or divine intelligence. Wait on the Lord, renew your strength. I waited patiently for the Lord and he turned to me and heard my cry. This year have you been waiting on the Lord? Do you know that he has heard your cry? Artificial intelligence gives us supremely rapid response. But always, is it always intelligent? Is it always what you need? What are some things that we have needed to wait for that took some time? This is a real question. What are some things that we have had to wait for in your life and in mine that have taken some time? Growing season, right? The harvest, the annual harvest. What are some things that we've had to wait for that take some time? You all are so quiet. See, you're not used to being here. You're allowed to speak. You have permission to speak. <laughs> Wisdom. Pardon me? I can hear you. Vaccine. I thought you said Matt Bean. The vaccine. <laughs> Who's Matt Bean? I don't know. What are some things we've had to wait for? A world championship for the Cleveland Indians. A child to walk. Your child to walk, yes. We have the excitement of going on right now. Uh, Axel can stand if he holds on to something. And he can kind of walk if you hold his hand, little fingers. We've seen him do it on FaceTime. And he can say, da, 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 da. Which 
makes his ma, 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 ma a little ticked. <laughs> she said, well, I did the hard work on this. Are there things that we wait for? Pardon me? Learning to drive, of course. Yes. Uh, my, my son Adam moved to um, Apple Valley, and he's got a nice little place, and it's kind of a hilly lawn that he, that he has, and, and, um, and he's, got his own, he's got his own lawn tractor. And the first time we visited them, they were fixing the place up because it, it had, you know, it just needed to be tidied up a little bit when they moved in. And so Grandpa, old dad, old Frank, got on the lawn tractor, and I made everybody nervous because they weren't sure I knew how to drive that lawn tractor on a hilly lawn. And they were right. <laughs> It was okay, but, but then Adam's wife, Nicole, who is a farm girl, knew what to do. She got on that thing, and she was just a real pro. So I still have a, long, I have a learning curve on that. What is worth waiting for? Many things that are of God's are gradual. Take time. We wait for a vaccine. We wait for even, even this lightning fast science takes some time to provide uh, a vaccine for us. And then we wait our turn to, to have the shot in our arm. And the, the psalm says, the psalm says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. And so we wait for the Lord. And God's, God's intelligence is perfect. More than ours is perfect. And God's intelligence cannot be rushed. In this particular song, a psalm, God, sometimes we wait for a home, don't we? Sometimes, sometimes we feel, we can feel a little, little out of joint with our life journey. And that's a great time to return to the Lord and to check our inner navigation. When there feels like perhaps God's calling us to a greater centeredness in his love. To put aside some things so that other things can be emphasized. And I, I sense in the congregation people are longing to be back in this place. They are longing to be back in this place face to face so that they can receive the regular nurture from God that comes from Christian fellowship. Hmm. Our singers long to sing God's song shoulder to shoulder all in the same room. We long to sing the hymns. Yet God's intelligence can't be rushed and patience is a hard thing. If we ask God for patience, God will honor the request. Waiting patiently for the Lord is a sign of trust that God will provide in God's good timing. In fact, waiting for the Lord often brings the joy of deliverance. Won't we be thrilled when this whole experience is long in the rear view mirror? Trust. 
Trust in God. Be happy in God. Do not go astray following false gods, which always leads to disappointment. And trust that God knows what he's doing. You know, we get into trouble, uh, often we get into trouble when we think that we know better than God. Have you ever done that? Maybe I'm the only one, occasionally. And usually Beth is the one who tells me, I don't think we're going to do that. The most important thing to remember is that God offers us himself. The most important thing to remember is that God offers him, offers himself to us. God became human in Jesus Christ. We put our trust in God and we don't just receive information from God, nor do we simply get a string of words and advice as if we asked Siri or Alexa. Instead, we receive the very person of God in Jesus. And we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's something Alexa and Siri and Google can't give to us, no matter how quick they try. Now, I know some of us have faced one kind of crisis or another during this season. All of this pandemic has been going on, and one thing that I've noticed is that God, that God is there in all of us when we turn to him, the indwelling of the Spirit. In the midst of this, life goes on and the challenges of life continue. And yet when we turn to the Lord instead of to other gods and other sources of information, the indwelling of the Spirit, as, as it's referred in a different place, in a different way in the Scripture, God gives a counselor, an advisor, source of wisdom, a source for navigation. The psalmist instructs us, do not hesitate to make our needs known to God. Do not hesitate to make our needs known to God. We do, we, when we ask more trivial things, if you got a leaky faucet, we ask Alexa for a plumber. If we got a dead electrical outlet, we have we ask Siri to point us to an electrician. If we have a leaky roof, uh, Google what's a roofer near me. What are the reviews on this roofer? If we got a toothache, Alexa, send me to a dentist. If we have got a stomach ache. Uh, Siri, send me to a doctor. If got anxiety, Google, send me to a therapist. Need some music? Alexa, play me Chopin. Need directions? Siri, 
do you know the way to Nashville? So why, when challenging times come, why don't we ask God? Why don't we ask God as God knows we should? Artificial intelligence is artificial. Divine intelligence is what we need. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear and gracious God, speak with us. Whisper in our ears. Help us to hear your voice when we have a need. And then... Let us respond, saying the words, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Amen. mentioned to you as we began that yesterday here in this church we had the service of Donna Castle. Donna's family was kind to share some of her flowers with us, this beautiful bouquet among the arrangements that are here this morning. And I was struck by the reality of Donna's life. She was a child of the Depression, living outside of Bucyrus on a, in a very humble uh, setting. And she went to OSU and became a teacher and was a lifelong learner and nurturer and teacher of her children. No matter what was happening in their lives, she, but Donna was sure to help them know that there was a lesson in it for them. And in that coming out of that drab time during the depression when they didn't have anything Donna came to be a personality that offered color in our midst she always liked to wear bright colors because being cheerful and inspiring joy is what she wanted to do so let's be that kind of a person taking the joy we receive from God, knowing that God will see us through all the way through, lead us all the way home. That is the rock upon which you can, buy, can stand all your days. 
And so God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. And may you all live in this life so that in the world to come, you have life everlasting. Amen.